Hello everybody and welcome to the rundown. Chris Dixon, Info Weather Catholic Media. Today is Monday, January 11th, 2021. Let's get right into it. First off on the rundown today will be weather, sports, COVID-19, then we have a movie review followed by politics and news. But first, let's get to this week in liturgy. It's ordinary time now. We have optional memorials of St. Hilary on Wednesday and the Blessed Virgin Mary on Saturday. The second Sunday in ordinary time will take place on Sunday. Nothing too crazy this week. Let's get into the weather. Winter weather-wise, we're really looking at a whole lot of nothing, uh, except for maybe Friday and Saturday. We could see some wintry precip in the northeastern United States. Severe weather-wise, it's going to be very quiet for the next eight days, which means uh, we aren't going to have any severe weather to worry about. Tropical weather. Uh, this is the same graphic we showed last time. It hasn't been updated yet. It'll be updated tomorrow by the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, we do potentially see some development in the southern Indian Ocean as well as the western Pacific, as mentioned in the previous video. Here in Ohio, we're looking at a cloud-sun mix for most of the week. We're going to break 40 degrees on Tuesday and potentially have a rain-snow mix sort of thing Friday. It's not going to be anything too wild um, in terms of amounts. Even if it were to be all snow, it's not going to be anything too wild. But by the time we get to the weekend, we're going to be below freezing even for the highs and mostly cloudy. In Norman, it's going to be sun much of the week. It's going to be around or warmer than 50 all week as well. Nearly 60 degrees this Thursday and potentially some precipitation coming Sunday morning. Nothing too crazy in Norman either. As for sports, let's get into the college football playoff. Tonight at 8 p.m., your Ohio State Buckeyes take on uh, Alabama Crimson Tide, who now has the line by 8.5. It was 7.5 last week, over under now 75.5. It'll be on ESPN. Alabama said that it could be a game-time decision uh, whether or not they play due to COVID. If uh, either team decides not to play due to COVID, the game will be pushed to next Monday at 8 p.m. NFL playoff-wise, the Browns actually won, if you can believe it, last night, 48-37. Four interceptions and a fumble from the Steelers' offense resulted in 28 points in the first quarter by the Browns. The Browns will play the Chiefs uh, uh, probably on the 17th, it looks like. Uh, the Bills will play the Ravens, and the Packers will play the Rams on the 16th. Buccaneers Saints on the 17th. And then we'll have the, uh, the NFC and AFC championships on the 24th. And then, of course, Super Bowl 55 on February 7th. That's what we have for now. Let's get to coronavirus video update number 64, plots by Tomer Berg, because why would I create my own if somebody else can create them for me? Uh, as we see, not anything too crazy with our changes uh, in terms of daily new cases. Uh, it looks like a little bit of a spike, especially Ohio, Pennsylvania. You can see how it goes down and then back up a little bit. You see that as well in Illinois and Indiana. Uh, likely as a result of Christmas time gatherings. So uh, anyways, nothing too crazy there. Moving on to the county by county total cases per capita. Um, you do see, I mean, nothing really of note here. It just kind of highlights the counties um, that are worst hit. So if you know your county on a map, there's that map for you. Cumulative deaths per 100,000 in the trend line, of course, still going up. Uh, because it can't go down, uh, but there are uh, a bit a bit better numbers uh, in terms of increasing. It looks like it's starting to flatten out at the top, especially North and South Dakota. You see that the very steep slope now starting to flatten up at the top of the curve, which is definitely good news. The total deaths per capita highest in the Dakotas. You get one county there in uh, Wisconsin, a county. Uh, several counties really in Kansas, some in Texas, and the, the rest of the southeast as well. So those are definitely of note. Current hospitalizations for 100,000 are again on the decline in nearly uh, every state on the northern part of the country. 
However, the southern part of the country, not so much. California, Texas, Florida, all of those still moving upward, as well as uh, some portions of the northeast as well. But the center of the country, o Ohio, uh, Iowa, the Dakotas, those areas are on the decline. It looks like Washington and Oregon are also on the decline. Oregon only at 11, uh, North Dakota at 9, and Vermont at 6. So those are very low numbers per 100,000 in terms of hospitalizations, which is good. Texas, I read an article uh, that they're nearing their ICU bed capacity within the next two weeks if they continue to go up. As you see, that's not one of the states that's flattening out or going down in terms of hospitalizations. Infections over time, this is basically the same graph, just the today bar moved a little bit over. Um, again, if we mask, uh, that's that green line. If we get vaccines, that's that blue line. That purple line's the projection from IHME. And then the red line is if we did nothing about it. So again, continue to wear your mask, get the vaccine when it's your turn, etc., etc. Speaking of the vaccine, let's get right into it. Here's the chart in terms of morality in the U.S. candidates. This was put together by the Diocese of Worcester. Um, the the chart here really isn't... Uh, the, the, the chart just shows whether abortion-derived uh, fetal cell lines were used in the development or testing are the two columns. If it failed both, I used uh, fetal cell lines in both. Then I marked it in red for you. That's the AstraZeneca vaccine, probably the most well-known out of those. There's only one that doesn't use it in development or production or testing, so it's the highest morality. It's currently in phase one of uh, clinical testing by the FDA. There are a few without a number off to the side. The Santa Fe Pasteur Translate Bio and the autoimmune vaccine uh, are still preclinical. AstraZeneca has not been approved by the U.S., but has finished stage three. It's approved in the U.K. Several other in uh, phase three trials, a couple in phase two trials, the Pfizer and Moderna are the only ones approved by the United States. 95% effective. AstraZeneca is only 70% effective. So that's that for you. As of last night, U.S. cases were nearing 23 million with deaths nearing 400,000 current cases over 9 million, probably going to be over um, 10 million before uh, probably the end of the week would be my guess. If not, maybe a bit after that, uh, continuing on downward, you see the states, no change in terms of who's ranked higher or lower this week. Worldwide, over 90 million cases, nearing 2 million deaths, about 25 million current cases the united states continues to lead the way india didn't increase that much at all brazil increased a decent amount uh, and then the rest of the country is falling there i don't believe any of those changed in terms of order either 6.7 million have received their first dose here in the united states the u.s has 22.1 million doses available again only 6.7 6 million of those have been used that 22 million is 6.7% of the U.S. population. Florida leads the way, to, uh, California leads the way in terms of that B117 virus, uh, uh, the, the strain from it that's more rapidly spreading. California and Florida lead the way. Several other states already have it. Let's be honest, probably every state has it at this point. But those are the official numbers from the CDC. And now it's time for movie review. We're going to talk about Soul. It came out on Christmas. It's one hour and 47 minutes long. Here's my review. Soul is a powerful film that reminds us of the little things in life and how people have different passions. These passions and our personalities are what make us unique. The film's subtle, sometimes not so subtle statements on the differences between black and white culture and those between the arts and sciences are also notable unfortunately soul's understanding of souls is lacking and undermines all of catholic eschatology god the human person and the afterlife in a way that is incompatible with church teachings and as a children's film it should be avoided at all costs again it's geared towards children and it's completely contrary to church teaching so children should not watch the film out of sake of their spiritual health however its comedic depiction of mother Teresa is funny um, but of course it's not really something that she would do. It's, it's a comedic depiction of her, 
uh, but combined with the importance of the topic of the soul, both of those things, uh, and as a whole, then the movie Soul turns away from Catholicism. So uh, I, it, it's a good film in terms of a piece of art, but it's not a great film in terms of uh, the audience it's geared towards from a Catholic perspective. And any Catholic theologian would agree with that statement. Let's move into politics. Once again, the 117th Congress is now set in place. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the U.S. Capitol rights, and we'll talk about Inauguration Day. 117th U.S. Congress, we already talked about the House last week. Nothing has changed there. The Senate, however, is not pending results today. I forgot to take that off, but the numbers there are correct. 48 Democrats, two independents who caucus with the Democrats, 50 Republicans, led by Pence for the next nine days before Kamala Harris takes over on uh, Inauguration Day. Speaking of Inauguration Day, that will take place at the Capitol, where there were riots with five deaths, over 80 arrests. Resignations from the Deputy National Security Advisor, that's the guy right below the National Secu Secu Security Advisor, the Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of Education, the Police Chief of the Capitol, and the Sergeant at Arms of the House of Representatives, uh, among all of those people who resigned in wake of the U.S. Capitol riots. Donald Trump was banned from Twitter. He's banned on Instagram and Facebook through Inauguration Day. He's also banned on Twitch and Snapchat. People have proposed multiple things to deal with Trump. One of them is forcing him to resign. The other is uh, having Pence, who has not ruled this out yet, uh, as of the latest that I've heard. He has not ruled that out. Uh, and the cabinet taking the 24th Amendment Section 4 into effect, which would remove Trump uh, from his powers and make Pence acting president, although Trump would still hold the office. I believe today Congress intends to draft a resolution and set it forth uh, to have Pence enact the, on the 25th Amendment within the next 24 hours. If he does not, then they will enact articles of impeachment or, of course, attempt to pending the vote of Congress because uh, that's what this all depends on. And that's that third option there proposed to be impeached via an act of Congress. But even if that all happens, it'll only last nine days, maybe not even by the time you're seeing this video, depending on how long it takes to upload. January 20th at noon Eastern time, Joe Biden will become the 46th president in the United States, the second Catholic president in history, Kamala Harris becoming the 49th vice president, first female, first African-American, first Asian-American, and second person of color to hold the vice presidential office. So very historic uh, administration coming into place before they even enact anything. Uh, so definitely excited to see what they are able to accomplish. Uh, of course, um, we'll see. I won't say anything yet. We'll see what happens. Let's move on to the news. Ohio protecting human dignity. Wyoming trying to save babies, our bishops, and other Catholic news. First, Ohio protecting human dignity. On December 30th, uh, Mike DeWine signed a bill into law that requires that fetal remains from an abortion must be cremated or buried. The abortion provider must pay for it unless the mother chooses a different way uh, if she makes arrangements to... Uh, deal with the remains of her aborted fetus and uh the penalty for this is a first degree misdemeanor now this was already basically a law it basically said before this was signed uh that they had to be uh the remains had to be disposed of in a dignified manner but it didn't specify what a dignified manner was and so this spells it out it has to be cremated or buried uh, so that's that in wyoming um a little bit different thing but still having to do with abortion it protects infants born alive prevents abortion up until birth in march 2020 uh this is a born alive act one of those uh terms that you've heard recently so if an abortion is attempted and the baby comes out uh you can't go killing the infant that's not okay uh, theoretically speaking, the Wyoming House passed this 44 to 16 in March. The Senate passed it 23 to 7. Like these are overwhelming majorities that passed this. And then the governor decided to veto it. Um, so that's what's wrong with 
America. Anyways, uh, they're trying again. So hopefully the governor gets some sort of straight thinking or something, because I don't know how you say no to such a large majority like that, but that's just me. In terms of our bishops across the world, uh, Castor, I'm not even going to try to say the rest of his name, uh, Bishop in Venezuela, died from COVID on Friday at age 69. Pope Francis is praying for the U.S. Also, his doctor died from COVID-19. Uh, Archbishop Baron of Tijuana recovered from COVID-19 on Wednesday. Uh, not fully recovered, but has started showing greater recoveries. In the Episcopal Conference of Malta, which is 94% Catholic, that island country there, split with the community over four main things. They were too fundamentalist in their perspective. They were neo-Gnostic. Uh, their view of how people live their life was uh, improperly hierarchical. And uh, they also are accused of spiritual view, abuse. So the Episcopal Conference separated themselves from that group over those things. They only have 4,000 followers on Facebook, so it's nothing too crazy. But it's definitely something that needs to be avoided. Uh, as we know, Gnosticism has been a heresy in the church for quite some time. Moving on to our last section of today's rundown. Uh, on January 7th, the uh, United States Health and Human Services ruling allowed faith-based adoption agencies to get federal funding regardless of same-sex marriage views. Uh, before that, there had been laws enacted, uh, uh, rules enacted, I, I suppose is probably a better uh, term to use, that prevented faith-based adoption agencies who uh, don't agree with same-sex marriage from getting federal funding. This ends that and gives those faith-based program uh, more federal, federal funding equal to those without the same-sex marriage views. That, of course, is a big win for the Catholic uh, adoption agency community, which is very large in the United States. A former deacon of the Diocese of Lubbock, Texas, is suing the diocese for defamation after accused of abuse of an adult. It was a 40-year-old woman that was uh, at... Um, the, the question is, he's suing for a million dollars, and the diocese has asked the Texas Supreme Court to drop the case. Whether or not that actually happens, we'll see. Um, I don't know enough to make a decision on it myself. Uh, it seems rather complicated because the, just the wording of it, or the wording of the diocese, the wording of the deacon that uh, feels defamed, uh, those two things conflicting with one another aren't that great. In terms of ecumenical news, though, we do have some good news coming out of the Vatican. They're drafting a joint statement with the Lutheran World Federation on Martin Luther's excommunication and what that means for the church. We'll see. Uh, for, for the universal ecumenical church um, is what that's on. So basically the impact of Luther's excommunication. That's all for now. Chris Dixon, InfoWeather. Catholic media, stay safe, stay healthy, and don't forget to wear your mask. Here is our sources and credit info.